Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts and first impressions of this imaging refractor that I recently acquired. So to start things off, this is an Apertura 60mm FPL 53 doublet refractor. And the first thing I noticed about it right out of the box was how heavy this thing is. That was a sure sign to me that this scope means business and will surely yield for me the kind of wide field shots that I am hoping to capture. The seller offered a package deal for this scope, and I was also able to get a compatible 2-inch field flattener. More on that in a second. The dovetail bar seen in the picture was sold separately, but I knew I would need one in order to properly secure the scope on my ABX mount. Another thing that caught my immediate attention as I was setting up this scope for the first time was the focuser. This is unlike any focuser I have ever used before, as it features not one, but two focus knobs, allowing for two-speed focusing and therefore better precision with focusing on an object. The focuser also features a built-in ruler to aid with achieving the kind of precision I need for imaging. While astrophotographers commonly joke about the fact that cloudy stretches always seem to follow astrolated upgrades, thankfully that was not the case for me as I was able to test out my new rig the very next evening. Setting up was fairly easy. I basically needed to rebalance my mount and I was good to go for how I would normally set up. However, when I began to image the beehive cluster as my initial target, I ran into a couple of snags. First of all, it became clear to me that the field flattener wasn't doing its job as the stars near the edges of my field of view were elongated. Secondly, the vignetting was quite severe as you could see in this single frame pick. Now, some vignetting is common and even normal and calibration frames such as flats usually help cancel out the unwanted effects of vignetting. But I knew right away that something was wrong and it turned out to be the 2 to 1.25 inch adapter that I was hooking my camera up to. I knew right then that I would need to order the correct T-ring that would be compatible with 2 inch eyepiece ports. Um, and that should solve that issue. But that was only half the battle. I still was completely puzzled as to why I wasn't getting round stars across my entire field of view, despite using a field flattener. Since my field flattener is adjustable, I tried different settings but to no avail. After doing a little digging, I realized that the solution to my problem was staring me right in the face the entire time. If I had read the item description on the seller's website a bit more carefully, I would have found that the field flattener calls for a very specific distance between the camera sensor and the flattener itself. In the case of my DSLR camera, it is 55 millimeters between the sensor and the edge of the T-ring. The item description called for 58 millimeters between the camera sensor and the flattener, so that means the adjustable flattener needs to be set to 58 minus 55 millimeters, which is 3 millimeters. A couple of nights later, after finally receiving the proper T-ring, I tried it again, and voila! I was finally able to successfully get the round stars I was after. The flattener was indeed doing its job, and I can now tap into the scope's full potential. My first ever successful image using my new rig was this capture of the famed Leo triplet. With the help of auto-guiding, I was able to obtain 3 minute subs with ease, and I had just enough time that night to capture an hour's worth of data. Overall, I am quite pleased with this new refractor, and I look forward to all the possibilities that it will have to offer this coming year, and I think it was worth the purchase. Perhaps I can work on capturing a wide field shot of Markarian's chain this spring, or Lagoon and Trifid Nebulae this summer, or maybe even return to larger targets such as the Dromina and the Pleiades in the fall. Time will tell. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you would like to see more of this kind of content. Until next time, clear skies and cheers!